Dr. Sack, mm -hmm. you are the executive secretary of an organization called CTPTO, which is uh, meant to facilitate into entry of the CTPT, Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Absolutely. Why is the CTPT important? What does it distinguish it from, from the NPT, the Nuclear Non Proliferation Treaty? The CTBT is part of the NPT, one can say this, uh, because in the many articles under the NPT, uh, the CTBT comes higher up. And uh, if we take the last review conference, the 2015 review conference, NPT review conference in New York, if there's one issue that was a consensus issue, that was the CTBT, mm -hmm. the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, for several reasons. I see the Test Ban Treaty in the context of non-proliferation and ultimately disarmament mm -hmm. as a low-hanging fruit. Why? Because you have 183 that have signed the treaty, 164 that have ratified, and in our Annex 2 framework, there are eight remaining countries which ratification is necessary for its entry into force. You wouldn't call them rogue states. You have India, Pakistan, Israel, Iran, and Egypt, US, China, and North Korea. Why is it important that those eight get on board for the entry into force? Because the entry into force of the CTBT contributes to international peace and security. Mm -hmm. For it will put in hand to a key framework in the development of a nuclear weapon, testing. Testing is important if you want to make sure that the weapon you develop is working. If we put a hand to nuclear testing by the entry into force, we don't talk about North Korea anymore, mm -hmm. and we don't talk about any other country. And that's why the entry into force of the CTBT shouldn't be isolated from all the debate about mm -hmm. whether North Korea has mm -hmm. tested the H bomb or the A bomb. Mm -hmm. The question is not about A, H or Z. Mm -hmm. The question is about testing and no more testing. Mm -hmm. And that's why the CTBT is important. But why is it that this treaty, uh, as far as coming into force is concerned, facing such an uphill task? Twenty years now since it was open for signature in 1996? First of all, I don't think anyone had anticipated that the entry into force of the treaty of the CTBT would take that long. Uh, they were basically banking on uh, the experience of the OPCW, mm -hmm. the Chemical Weapon Convention, mm -hmm. whereby it took two, three years for its entry into force. I think many underestimated uh, the geopolitical situation as things were moving. And the fact that it was rejected by the U.S. Senate didn't help because it brought doubt in many head with regard to the relevance mm -hmm. of ratifying the CTBT. And uh, if 99, the U.S. had ratified the CTBT, it would have been a completely different ball game today. We know, nevertheless, that the U.S. remains committed to ratifying the CTBT, but the administration has its hand tied because they don't have the numbers at the Senate. What makes you optimistic now that numbers may change? No. Uh, what makes me optimistic is because I don't see the CTBT as a partisan issue. Mm -hmm. It's not... Uh, Republican against Democrat when you vote for or against the CTBT. It should be a bipartisan issue whereby both Republican and Democrat see the validity, the importance, the necessity of the CTBT mm -hmm. in the U.S. national security framework. Mm -hmm. That's what we should work on. Not to say we need more Democrats, 
to get the CTBT ratified, or we need more Republican to not get it ratified. I don't see it this way. Mm -hmm. I see it as an effort to get both parties to come together to consider this issue as important for U.S. national security. And to do so, I think the administration is on the right track, mm -hmm. even if the perception, especially from people like us uh, who are heading uh, this organization, we feel that it's a, a bit slow. Mm -hmm. I think it's the right track because you have to educate people for them to understand before you get into a debate where you can speak the same language. Mm -hmm. You can be in the same level playing field where you can talk, debate, and then come up with a solution that could lead to the ratification. Yeah, on the basis of what you're saying, it's obvious that you, are, you have an unflinching commitment to this uh, CTBT and it's going into force. It's only in 2013 that you became the executive secretary. And uh, it's widely known that you have done a number of, undertaken a number of efforts. Mm -hmm. For example, the group of immigrant persons. Mm -hmm. So could we briefly explain what are the other activities that you have undertaken to create this awareness? Um, what activities uh, have been undertaken to help uh, move on the CTBT entry into force? Look, I took over uh, the position as executive secretary in 2013. A lot has been done through my predecessor, my predecessors, and together with me because I was director of uh, the key division, the International Data Center. But if a lot has been done, we probably haven't done enough because business is not finished. The CTBT is not in force yet. So now let me go to what we've done. What we've done, we've given to the international community the technical and political tools for them to trust what they designed conceptually more than 20 years ago. When nobody believed that there would be a possibility to establish an international monitoring system and a verification regime that would be compliance, who verify compliance with the treaty to that extent. Mm -hmm. When I say to that extent, it's the efficiency, the reliability, and the commitment that came with the contribution of talented staff in this secretariat mm -hmm. to have detected the fourth mm -hmm. unusual event in the Korean Peninsula and put all the information, the technical specification, at the disposal of state signatories in the time frame of entering to force. This was key. Mm -hmm. We've proven to everyone that they've invested in something that pays off right now because they can tangibly see where the money is gone. It's gone into building this deterrent in a way where Nobody can cheat with regard to nuclear testing, mm -hmm. explosive testing, without being detected by our international monitoring system together with the national technical means of the state parties. Where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? From the PRK? Should we say, should we eliminate them? Should we uh, sanction them? What no. should we do? Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, we should bank on what was achieved technically and politically to put in place the monitoring framework and the verification process for the compliance with the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. That is a given. If that what serves the purpose to convince state parties to ratify and then to move for the entry into force, mm -hmm. what we need is leadership. Leadership in acknowledging what hasn't worked, meaning the frustrations, the concerns of those eight remaining countries to work on those concerns and work on those frustrations. It's the only way by sitting around the table that we can address the issues. We cannot keep on saying mm -hmm. India and Pakistan haven't signed the treaty, North Korea hasn't signed the treaty, why bother? 
at this point in time. We can't let the time pass where and when North Korea is continuing testing because we don't know who will be next. Mm -hmm. And there's a view which one has heard the last days here in Vienna that uh, it should not be only left to the United, uh, United States to ratify the treaty. It can be done independently of the United States. For example, India and Pakistan could do that, Israel could do that, Iran could do it. Do you, do you think this is something which is realistic, this approach? Yeah, I think it is uh, realistic uh, for a simple reason where, uh, you know, it's the right timing in everything. And right now, if you look at the eight countries, which one of them has a, a situation that we can consider right or consider conducive for the CTBT ratification? If I speak today, mm -hmm. I would say Israel and Iran. And you will ask me why. Why? Under the JCPOA, the Joint Consultative Plan of Action under the Iran deal, mm -hmm. Iran has shown part plans. They're showing, through so implementing this deal, that they have no intention whatsoever to develop nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. If Iran, under the implementation of the JCPOA, is showing part blanche, as we say in French, the ratification of the CTBT becomes more than relevant mm -hmm. to Iran. If that's the context, Israel has nothing to lose. The threat that they had with regard to Iran developing nuclear weapon is gone. If that threat is gone, let them join forces and consider the CTBT ratification together. Mm -hmm. And this will create a dynamics in the region with regard to what was a dream for so long a WMD free zone in the Middle East mm -hmm. because you'll have two superpowers in the Middle East who would have considered the CTBT ratification for Egypt to join, maybe, to consider because, I mean, the situation would be conducive in terms of trust and confidence mm -hmm. and to move on. And this is why I propose a strong moratorium on testing in the Middle East, mm -hmm. a strong moratorium on testing among the P5, they've done it, mm -hmm. but it hasn't been sealed or said anywhere in writing it's a gentleman's agreement. Mm -hmm. You just heard India say they will not uh, stop the answer to force of the CTBT. Yeah. They will not test. We hear it from China. Mm -hmm. We hear it from US. But shouldn't we have a framework where this is said and written and sealed? a condition that could lead into their ratification of the CTBT. This is what we need. To do that, you need a platform where those can discuss together. So that would mean that one should consider the CTBT as a de facto global treaty, even though it's not yet sure. The de facto term that led to a de facto norm has been used mm -hmm. and is being used. Uh, I did use it myself, but I want to stop using it. Okay. Uh, because we don't need the facto, we need the reality. Okay. We need the jury. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, if you, cont if you get satisfied with the facto, yeah. and you, never move forward. you never move forward. Yeah. And this is a risk, although you know, having a de facto norm is still good, mm -hmm. because it's a quick win. And this is what we have right now. Yeah. You know, if we take uh, North Korea outside of the scope. But more importantly, my issue is the risk that the longer the entry into force of the CTBT is, the more risk we have with regard to treaty fatigue that could lead to people saying, why are we investing in something if we don't know when the treaty will enter into force? Mm -hmm. That's the biggest risk for this treaty. Very two, two brief questions. Mm -hmm. When are you going to North Korea? When I'm invited. Mm -hmm. If uh, you give me an invitation, I'll get on a plane, the, the next plane <laughs> to North Korea. Have you talked to the Chinese about this? I've talked to the Korean about North Korean about this. Mm -hmm. okay. Because those are the people that I met. When I talk to the Chinese, I talk about their ratification. Yeah and their station. And when I talk to the North Korean, I talk about how can they join the CTBT. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
When do you think the treaty will become a reality? I wish yesterday. Okay. But uh, once I was interviewed, no, realistically, uh, in this 21st century, can we talk about realistically? That's a question that I have to ask, and I'm going to answer that same question by saying, what is realistic today? Things can change tomorrow. It takes a huge crisis, and the geopolitical context changes drastically, and then we may find ourselves in a situation where people find the urgency to sit around the table and then to decide on this treaty. That could happen. Mm -hmm. The same way it happened for the, the Syria issue in terms of the chemical weapon. I'm not saying we need a detonation before we do that, yeah. but who knows mm -hmm. uh, what happened in the world that necessitate a situation where people feel the urgency to sit together and then deal with this, what I call a low-hanging fruit, mm -hmm. before the situation gets more complex. And mm -hmm. In that sense, it could happen any time, because I'm optimistic. Yes, yeah, so we look forward to a good sense prevailing on a larger scale than it does. Thank you very much. Thank you.